it's me, Carlos, once again. So today I'm going to discuss a very important topic with you guys. Um, I'm going to talk about Siguatera poisoning. Wait, Siguatera? No. Siguatera fish poisoning. Yeah. That's what it is. So, um, yeah. Um, I actually had a conversation with one of my cousins. She's, uh, she works for the government. She's an epidemiologist, and we had a one-on-one -on -one conversation on this poison. So uh, she sent me a couple good links and a couple articles about this poison, which I'm gonna share with you guys now, and I'm gonna go through uh, some important topics that I felt like you guys should know. So first off, ciguatera fish poisoning is a poison or toxin that humans can get if they eat fish that contains the toxin called ciguatoxin. Um, a dinoflagellant algae, referred to as Gambriodiscus toxiscus, yeah, it's a very hard word to pronounce, biology. Um, anyway, Gambriodiscus toxiscus is what makes the cigotoxin. And also, some very popular game fish that are associated with ciguatera fish poisoning are barracuda, grouper, triggerfish, Red Snapper, Hog Snapper, Amberjacks, and King Mackerel. And there's actually a lot of other fish that can contain Ciguatera poisoning too. Or Ciguatera poisoning, sorry, I'm getting confused. <laughs> but um, the reason these fish can get it is because these fish eat the reef fish that eats the toxic, toxic algae that grows on the reef. And we eat them, which is how this toxin moves up the food chain. So basically, um, a small fish eats algae off the reef and then a bigger fish eats that fish and then say like an amberjack or a barracuda eats that fish and then we catch that fish and then eat that is just moving its way up the food chain. Here are some symptoms that are associated with ciguatera fish poisoning. Uh, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, arthralgia which is pain in the joint, myalgia which is uh, pain in the muscles, blurred vision, muscular weakness, and usually something that is hot can feel cold and something that is usually cold can feel hot. And, um, and these are just a few of many of the symptoms that are associated with ciguatera fish poisoning. How long does ciguatera usually last? If you have ciguatera, these symptoms will arrive within 24 hours of eating the fish. So if you don't have any of these symptoms between 28 and 48 hours, you should be fine. Symptoms usually go away after a couple days, but in bad cases, neuro neurological symptoms can last for even years. And also, a good point that I should mention is within the first 24 hours, um, the symptoms will usually be gastrointestinal. And then after 24 hours, it usually starts to become neurological. To be diagnosed, you should go see uh, your doctor. There are some medicines that can help relieve the symptoms of ciguatera fish poisoning, like um, charcoal, which may help with gastrointestinal decontamination. Uh, mannitol may help relieve neurological symptoms if taken within 24 hours. Some things that you can do to prevent getting ciguatera fish poisoning. Uh, avoid eating big fish like barracuda, and also any other reef fish that are known to carry ciguatera, because the bigger the fish, the longer they have lived, which means they have eaten a lot of other fish. So the bigger the fish, basically, the more chances that that fish can have ciguatera. So if you wanna eat like a barracuda or something because you love barracuda, I would suggest eating the smaller ones and any other fish that can contain ciguatera. Because like I just said, the bigger the fish, the longer it's lived and you don't know what the fish usually eat. So the plate is safe, I would eat a lot of the smaller fish. That can contain ciguatera fish poisoning. And also, ciguatera fish poisoning cannot be killed off by freezing or cooking, which sucks. So that's a big downfall because I wish it could be killed off with uh, cooking or freezing because then we wouldn't have to worry about it. If you think you have ciguatera fish poisoning, reach out to your county health department to further investigate and keep a sample of the fish that you ate frozen. If they suspect it's a case of ciguatera, they will test the fish out for free to let you know if the fish has ciguatera. They will only do this if you ate a fish that can contain uh, ciguatera fish poison. 
So uh, let's say if you ate like a sand perch or something, and then you reach out to your local county health department and you're like, hey, like, I feel like I have ciguatera fish poisoning. They'll ask you, hey, what did you eat? And if you say sand perch, they'll automatically dismiss it because um, sand perch is not on the list of fish that can potentially have ciguatera fish poisoning, which I don't think it is. No, it's not. Or is it? That's all I have for Sigutera. Um, I'll post some of the links that I got uh, my information from on uh, the comments. So um, if you want any further research on Sigutera, just uh, look at some of the links that I post. And uh, if you have any questions about anything, or even if you have any input that I missed about Sigutera, please drop a comment on this video and let me know. Um, I really want to learn as much as I can learn because I feel like it's a very important topic that a lot of fishermen need to know. And also remember guys, the bigger the fish, the higher chances that it can have ciguatera. But I don't know about you, but if I catch a 40 pound king mackerel, I just might take my chances with ciguatera. Um, that's completely up to you. I'm just trying to give you guys the facts. Thanks for watching. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know if the video was helpful. So thanks, and fish on.